bitches, it's the misanthropic one, aka He Who Hungers, and I'm back up in this bitch for another rant slash review. Today, I want to talk about this album right here, Copyright's long-awaited second album, or second official album, called The Life and Times of Peter Nelson. This album is insane, it's fucking great. I'm so glad that I finally got my hands on a copy of this album. Um, I, 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 and, and it's my honor to review this album because I've been a fan of copyright for years now. And um, let me give you a brief history lesson for those that don't know about uh, copyright or never heard of him he is a uh, underground heavyweight in hip-hop and um, if you're into copyright then you're into underground hip-hop if you've never heard of copyright you shouldn't be into underground hip-hop at all but um, this dude has uh, made his rounds uh, since the mid to late 90s uh, he came up with uh, a group called Megahertz with um, other fellow MCs like Jakaida Motormouth, who's also ill as fuck, uh, Tej Proto, now he goes by the name of Tej Future, uh, the late Camu Tail, and um, DJ and producer RJD2. They came out with an album called Table Scraps, I believe in like 97 or 98. That shit is an underground, groundbreaking album right there. It got re-released uh, recently. Go pick that shit up. Uh, <clears throat> and Copyright linked up with um, Cage and The Weathermen late 90s early 2000s and uh copyright got signed at eastern conference dropped a ill to me an underground classic very slept on the album is called the high exalted pick that shit up that was recently re-released but um it wasn't promoted like it should be like it should have been excuse me and um got slept on like a lot of underground gems and um <clears throat> he had a falling out with the weatherman i don't know the ins and outs of that situation so i don't really want to speak on it there's a lot of uh stupid speculation to what happened with him i know that there was a physical altercation between him and Camus. um but um in between then and now he put out a slew of mixtapes like Cruise Control, uh, The Jerk Volume Zero, which I don't have naturally. That shit is hard as hell to get. And um, The Worst of Copyright. And he's been torn extensively. And um, <clears throat> last year he dropped an album called, well, it's like an EP sort of, uh, called Ultrasound The Rebirth, which was fucking ill as well. I suggest you pick that shit up. He has a video for that song, Stop. Check that shit out. Um, and also has a video for the Asher Roth disc. Uh, what's it called? Cremation. Check that shit out as well. But um, fast forward to this. This is what I want to talk about today. Let's talk about the um, producers who helped create this work of art right here. Let's get into this real quick. All right, you got Sirac, Illmind, Twiz the Beat Pro, Joe Benny, Crisis, Black Wraith, RJD2, DJ Rematic, Josh Gabriel, Count Fifth, Dank Charnley, K 
Camuteo, Rob Stern. And yeah, that's about it. I don't want to repeat anybody. Oh, uh, intellect. Yeah. Those are who produced this fucking heat on this album right here. And let me go into the features real quick. Sean Price from Helter Skelter. Ruck from Helter Skelter. Planet Asia. Tej Future, a.k.a. Tej Proto. Um, Megahertz is on here. The whole gang is on here. They must have used a uh, unreleased Camel Tail verse because I didn't hear that one before. But uh, Megahertz, like I said before, is Camel Tail, Tej Future, RJD2, and Jakaida Motor Mouth. And obviously, copyright. Uh, you got Middle Distance Runner, Jet Jaguar, aka MF Grimm, or better known as MF Grimm. That's his, um, there's another alias called Jet Jaguar. Um, you got Dilated Peoples and Crooked Eye. So, you got a nice amount of, uh, features on here not too many which is good you know I, I like to see how the artist himself or herself progresses or I, I like to uh, see their showmanship on an album so it's divvied up pretty well and you got 20 tracks on here all hard-hitting and um, I'm about to get into that right now now I'm gonna get into the album a little bit, just going to some of the tracks real briefly. The album starts off real hard with track one called It, parts one, two, and three. Uh, shows that copyright still has his lyrical prowess on that track, and what I like a lot about this track, beat wise, is the fact that there's a transitional element with the beat like in other words it switches up right in the middle of the song and I love that you don't hear that a lot in hip-hop nowadays you hear it in the underground sometimes but you don't hear it a lot in hip-hop as a whole so I give um, copyright mad props for uh, that track because he killed that fucking track and props to Surak for um, producing some dope ass heat um, track 2 is Trooper featuring Sean Price y'all already know Sean Price is making his rounds on the underground he's been doing his thing for years I mean that's just an ill track with copyright and Sean Price on a track together you know it's gonna be lyrical murder on that shit um <clears throat> Before I go any further, I just want to add that I love the fact that on this album, Copyright has grown as an MC. And what I mean by that is a lot of people just look at Copyright as a battle MC, you know, because he got mad punchlines and the, the, a lot of his prior shit was a lot of... Uh, battle oriented type shit a lot of battle rhyming type shit which was hot but um <clears throat> he grew into actually making songs making full songs which he did a little bit in the past like um the one he did dedicated to his father who passed away uh called june which was an underground smash um but um now i'm gonna go into two tracks that sort of mirror what I'm talking about. Uh, Wish You Were Here, track three, and Smile, track four. Those are two tracks that show his depth. Like, he could actually go beyond the battle rap and shit. Uh, let's see what else I could talk about. Track seven, Mega Mega, uh, featuring his group Megahertz. <clears throat> 
dope posse cut, ill as fuck. I mean, that's probably maybe the last time, well, there's a Megahertz album coming out, so I don't want to jinx it, but I was going to say that's probably maybe the last time you're going to hear Camel Tail rap like Camel Tail, rap like that, excuse me, but um, hopefully that he has some unreleased rap verses that he could lend to the fucking Megahertz album that's supposed to be coming out, but um, that track is dope, beat is fucking dominating, <clears throat> Let's see what else I could talk about on here. Track 8, Forever in a Day. Um, this track, he's talking about the memories of the people he's lost. You know, you, you hear this album <clears throat> and songs like that, Forever in a Day, just invoke emotion and... Uh, that's just ill. Forever in a Day featuring Middle Distance Runner. I don't know if Middle Distance Runner is a group or one artist, but whoever they, you are, you did your thing on there. So that's a dope track right there. 